regions, but it hasn't happened yet. Professor? Hi, good evening, in the back, on the first floor. Um, you mentioned that a lot of the news coming out of that region doesn't reach the United States, and a lot of the messages that we do find in the mainstream media are, are biased. Um, can you make some recommendations on some either websites that we can read or newspapers or periodicals that would allow us to gain a more balanced view of what's going on in that region? Well, by now there are plenty of sources available if you really do a little work. But for direct coverage, regular coverage, daily coverage, I mean, there's nothing that compares with Al Jazeera. Uh, it's, uh, it's highly professional coverage. It has its limits. They're like Al Jazeera is based in Qatar, and they don't say anything about Qatar. And they don't, uh, you know, for example, when the, the suit when the uprising was crushed in Bahrain, uh, they didn't say anything about it. They barely said anything about it because Qatar government supported it. But with such limits, they do very good reporting. And the fact that they're the only you know, really expert, uh, hour, almost hour by hour reporting of the main things that are happening. Like during the Gaza invasion, now they're giving 24-hour coverage on the ground. Uh, there's nothing else there. Uh, during these uprisings, like say Egypt, Tucker Square, uh, they were the ones who were right on top of it. Uh, they have Arab-speaking journalists, they're very high quality and so on. Uh, kept out of the United States. I think there are two towns in the U.S. where you can even get it on cable television. And most of the world pick it up right away. But you can get it on the internet. Uh, and there are other uh, websites. The first of all, you can get other journals. You can get other newspapers. So if you read, say, the British press, I don't want to say it's magnificent, but on this issue, it's a little more open. Uh, you can get pretty good reporting in uh, uh, The Guardian, The Independent, and so on, mixed with other stuff. And there are, uh, if you take a look at some of the main web, you know, popular web, you know, general public uh, websites, say Zenit, there's a ton of material coming out constantly. I mean, you got to evaluate it. Not all of it makes any sense. You know, it's like everything else, you have to use your judgment, but it's certainly much broader variety. Uh, um, I've heard some reports through like various books that uh, the United States provided a lot of funding for like the back of the Cold War in Afghanistan and brought a lot of the brought a lot of the guns and tanks into that region. Sorry. Um, like in like the U.S. funding uh, Gaddafi with uh, in Libya. Like, funding Gaddafi. Yeah, and like a lot of the, a lot of regimes pumping military funding into other countries. Oh, Would you see that the U.S. is like, for Gaddafi is surreal. <laughs> And that, it's amazing the way it's being suppressed. Like, you know, right now, a couple of, two weeks ago, uh, there, there's a trial underway in the Hague, you know, International Tribunal. Uh, the International Tribunal on Sierra Leone, uh, atrocities in Sierra Leone, which are horrible. Uh, the person on trial is Charles Taylor. The chief prosecutor is an American law professor from Syracuse University. Uh, he was very bitter about that. The trial just ended. Uh, he was very bitter about it because he wanted to try Gaddafi. He said they have evidence that uh, Gaddafi was the main person responsible, as he put it, for the killing over a million people uh, in Sierra Leone. But Britain and the United States blocked it. And when he was asked why, he said, welcome to the world of oil. Uh, right in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, there's a group based in Harvard Business School. It's called, was it called? I forget the name of it. But uh, they were just exposed by a Boston Globe reporter. Uh, they have been providing services to Gaddafi, including uh, writing uh, you know, PR material for him praising his magnificent uh, thoughts about uh, society and uh, democracy and so on. Uh, big shots at the Harvard Business School. Uh, in England, it's, you know, in England it actually hit headlines. So the head of the London School of Economics had to resign uh, because it turned out that uh, they were getting big grants from uh, Libya, from uh, their 
such a dear gift to the way of providing a doctoral dissertation for one of Gaddafi's sons, which I think was probably written by that Cambridge master. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and that, yes, arms and everything else. I mean, the U.S. policy toward him has been sort of mixed. I mean, he's not like uh, the dictators in Saudi Arabia. He's not totally reliable. In fact, not at all. It's kind of a loose cannon. So when they have a way, if they have an opportunity to get rid of them, they'll be happy to do it. Uh, but uh, whereas, say, King Abdullah or something, they, they, they can do what he likes. Uh, but it's uh, but yes, this group quite a support. I mean, these are the headlines, all of these things. Uh, well, I better find the mic. Yeah. <laughs> Who's got the mic? Where? Okay. Oh. Uh, in your opinion, if the United States was able to switch entirely to domestically produced renewable energy resources, and we no longer need to rely on any oil from the Arab world, how, what sort of an impact would this have on U.S. Arab relations? Approximately zero, in my opinion. There's a lot of mythology about this. I mean, the, the U.S. doesn't get most of its oil from the Middle East. In fact, if you look at U.S. energy policy, so for example, you know, year 2000, last Clinton year, they came out with a big study of uh, energy, and the conclusion was you know, the U.S., of course, has to control the Middle East, but that goes way back, but it should, uh, that's a matter of world control, but uh, the U.S. itself said it should rely on but more secure Atlantic Basin supplies, meaning Western Hemisphere and uh, West Africa. So the rest of the world could rely on insecure supplies, but we got to make sure we rely on secure ones. In fact, if you look back at the history, it really is surreal. Uh, so back in, in the 1950s, for example, uh, the U.S. was the main, by far the main producer, in fact, the main export. Uh, the Eisenhower administration made a decision to, uh, uh, to um, essentially eliminate U.S. domestic resources, to, to uh, take U.S. oil only from Texas, which was much more expensive than from Saudi Arabia. But this was for the benefit of Texas oil producers. So there was a decision to exhaust U.S. domestic resources, of course it could exhaust it, but to deplete U.S. domestic resources for the benefit of Texas oil producers and a couple of corrupt cabinet members who pretty soon were, you know, shots in the uh, Texas oil system and, uh, and to pay a lot more for it. So Americans paid a lot more for oil. Uh, you know, that's what they were doing. In a, and that went on for, I think, 14 years, right through the Democratic administration of the 60s. Now, what they were essentially doing was depleting U.S. oil resources, leaving big holes in the ground, which we now call the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and we fill it up from imported oil from Saudi Arabia. I mean, these systems are run in order to make money uh, for the right kind of people, not for reasons of security. And today, to get back to your question, if the U.S. were running 100% on solar power, we have exactly the same policies towards the Middle East. You go back towards to the global planning at the end of the Second World War. It was recognized pretty clearly. In fact, said one of the leading advisors, one of the Roosevelt Truman's leading advisors, that uh, if we can control Middle East oil, uh, we will have substantial control of the world because it's, it's such a powerful instrument of control. And that remained true right through the 50s when the U.S. was practically not using the oil at all. And it would continue today. And these are instruments of world control. Um, this entire conversation appears to be revolving around the relationship with Israel. Um, 